Hi everyone. In this video, I want to talk about the AKS network isolated mode that we now have available that's in preview at the time of this recording. If we think about what communications are AKS clusters require, remember there's two really planes to Azure Kubernetes services. We have the control plane, and that control plane is Microsoft hosted. And it includes things like the NCT database, it includes the scheduler, it includes the API server, which is obviously super important. And then you have the node pools. Now the node pools, they live in the customer subscription. Now those nodes live in the customer virtual network. So I've got my VNet. And then we go and create those various node pools. Now, within those node pools, they're all running various components, and one of them is the kubelet. Remember, the kubelet has to go and talk to that API server. And we already have solutions for private connectivity to the API server. One of them, for example, is you can have a private endpoint to go and talk to the API server. Another one is you can do API server VNet integration. I get a small delegated subnet within my virtual network. There's an internal Azure load balancer that then fronts it and I can talk to it that way. But consider there's a number of other communications we require. Consider the bootstrapping, the initial creation of my AKS cluster, and then it's, it's ongoing maintenance. And if you look at the picture, these are nodes. Well, obviously one of the things the nodes require is an operating system. It needs that VHD image to initially create and then potentially update those nodes on some periodic schedule. And so the first thing we kind of have is the Microsoft Marketplace. So we have the Marketplace where we have the various node images. So they have to be able to go and brought down and applied to those virtual machines that make up the virtual machine scale sets that make up our node pools. Now this communication to the marketplace that already runs over the Microsoft backbone. There is no communication I have to worry about from my virtual network to let it talk to the marketplace. This is all done by the control plane, it's getting the image, it's applying a, a copy of it to make up the VHD that our nodes use. So that's not anything I have to worry about. But then what we also have, remember, is well, there's the Microsoft Artifact Registry. Well, that contains the container images that I need, because remember, we go and create a bunch of containers on these nodes as well to run a number of the core capabilities we need as part of Kubernetes. So those have to be communicated to, i.e. from my nodes, I do have to be able to talk to the Microsoft Artifact Registry. Now, there were some ways to limit that. So one of the things we previously could do was we could use a user-defined route, i.e guide the IP traffic through something like an Azure firewall, and then you could allow only certain fully qualified domain names. For example, one of the ones you had to have was the Microsoft uh, container registry or artifact registry, whatever you want to call it. I had to have that. And there were some other ones as well. There's packages.microsoft.com, etc. So one option I had was sure, I could put in an Azure firewall or some other network appliance and restrict the fully qualified domain names, but there's a complexity to that and there's a cost to that. So what we now have is the ability to have a network isolated cluster. And there's a, a number of aspects to that. The first is now when we actually create our AKS cluster, we can pick our outbound type. What we now have is the ability to have this set to none, or we can actually set it to block as well. So none is it says, okay, well, this is a private subnet. There's no outbound access. Block will actually add an NSG to that as well. And if we jump over super quickly, and we were to look, so this is my AKS cluster. 
if I scroll down and look at its properties, because then we can actually go and see its managed resource group where it's put the stuff. I let it, it create the virtual network. So if I go and look at its virtual network that it deployed to and then look at the subnet, one of the things we'll see it configured on the subnet is this idea of it is a private subnet. So there is no default outbound access at all. And the other thing we could actually see if we look, so I've already gone ahead and created my little AKS cluster. If I was to look at my configuration, look at my outbound type, what we can see is it is set to none. So there is no access to that. So I'm blocking all of those outbound communications. Now, the next thing I have to do is, well, I still need these container images. So the new capability, it's using a feature of the Azure Container Registry. So we have to have an Azure Container Registry instance. And what we're using here is a feature called the pull through cache. And because it's an Azure Container Registry instance, I can now add a private endpoint in my VNet that talks to the Azure Container Registry instance. And because I'm adding a pull through cache rule, when I try and talk to some image from the Microsoft Artifact Registry Container Registry, what actually will happen is the image will get pulled into the Azure Container Registry where it will then get served via the private endpoint to my cluster and it will go and create some container image there. So that pull through cache capability had been added to the Azure Container Registry before, obviously partly to be able to support this functionality. But now what it means is my VNet requires no connectivity at all to those external resources. And once again, if we jump over, if, if we go and look, well, firstly, if we just run another command and let's look at my configuration for the bootstrap profile, we can see sure enough, my artifact source is cache and it's talking to a particular container registry ID. Now in my case, and you have a choice here, I configured it to be a managed Azure Container Registry instance. So if I look in that infrastructure resource group, actually the first thing you can see is there is a container registry instance. If I go and look in that container registry instance, and we go and look at down here under services cache, we can see I have a rule here specifically for that AKS managed MCR, and it's talking to that Microsoft Artifact Registry. The other thing it did, is if we look at the networking, it put a private endpoint into that virtual network. We can see that bootstrap container registry. So it is now using that. Now, absolutely, you could also use your own. You can bring your own, and there's obviously just some configurations you have to do, but you have that choice. Now, one of the things that might be interesting, well, what actually is in there? So if we actually go and look, one of the things I can do, well, firstly, if I just look at the overview and my monitoring, I can see right now it's used 350 megabytes. So obviously I can see it, it's pulled some things there. If I go and look at my metrics, and if we look at successful pull count, we can see it's done a few bits and pieces here, but I can see there was 46 there and there's what, 10 there. So it's, it's pulled a number of different images through. If I actually looked at the node itself, it still thinks it's talking to the Microsoft Container Registry. So if I'm using AZ AKS command invoke, it's a private cluster, so I can't just use the regular commands, but this will actually run it via the API server. Here I'm looking at the nodes. I'm just gonna do a quick search for some of the images that it may have available to me there. I can see in terms of the images, they're, they're all sourced from 
still the mcr.microsoft.com. They came via the Azure Container Registry, but as it's kind of invisible to the nodes, it went to its intent because it's using caching. Hey, it went and pulled those through. But the huge key part here is what have we achieved is now I wouldn't require Azure Firewall and some particular fully qualified domain names because it's using the Azure Container Registry to support that pull through cache. And hey, it is now considered that network isolated mode. I don't require public connectivity to the API server because I'm using a previous capability of the private endpoint for the API server or that VNet integrated in that delegated subnet. And now for the bootstrapping information to get the container images, well, it's using the pull through cache via an Azure Container Registry that has a private endpoint. Remember the node images from the marketplace, that happens without VNet connectivity anyway, because that's more of the control plane. Now today at time of recording, it's only Linux nodes, but it can be Ubuntu or Azure Linux. It requires Kubernetes 1.30 and above. And the other thing you have to consider for communication is, well, these are nodes. These are running an operating system. And ordinarily what those operating systems do is, for example, nightly, they'll go and look and see, hey, are there any patches? Well, that would be another type of external connectivity required. So what we're doing today and what's required today is for my configuration, we're actually using, you can do different channels. So today is the node image channel. So what that means is weekly, it could be a slightly different cadence. It will go and replace each of the VHDs for those virtual machines that make up the node pools with an updated version of the node image that has all of the latest bug fixes and security updates on it. And so it turns off what the OS would normally do nightly to go and check. So now it doesn't require any other connectivity. It's following safe deployment practices. It follows maintenance windows you may have defined, but it's just going to update weekly, for example, or again, whatever that particular cadence may be, to go and get the updates um, for my particular node. So again, there isn't any additional connectivity required that you might think about for patching the operating system. So that was it. I hope this all makes sense, what it's doing. Really, the, the functionality for this network isolation, it's working with existing private API server connectivity, but it's now adding the ability for that container image data you need, it doesn't have to talk to that Microsoft Artifact Registry. Now it will do the pull through cache feature of ACR and just expose it via a private endpoint. And I'm nice and isolated. Hope that helps. Till next video, take care.